Hello friends, here is Mr. Ramesh Chandra, did B.Tech from IIT Kanpur and uh, taking a lecture on probability and uh, it is lecture number 4. In our previous 3 lectures, you have seen the basic definition of event, random experiment and algebra of events. Now in this lecture number 4, you will learn the various definition that mathematician has given and also discuss about their drawback. You are learning at MathSark Education, a learning place to fulfill your dream of success. You can also get these lectures at our website www.mathsark.com. So let us move on our definition part of the probability. Here is the first definition that is mathematical definition. And what that mathematical definition is? Let's have a look. If E1, E2, E3, E n are n mutually exclusive equilikely events. These are n mutually exclusive and equilikely events. And m of which are favorable to event A. Then the probability of happening event A is this p of a is equal to m upon n is equal to n of a upon n of s. These are the number of element in event a and ns is the number of element in sample space s. Obviously m must be less than or equal to n. In another word you can say that P of A is the number of favorable cases upon total number of cases when events are mutually exclusive and equilikely. Let us understand it by a different way. Let's say we have sample space S. You can see this is event E1, E2, E3 e4, e5, e6 and e7. So these are the seven event in this case. S is for sample space. So these are the seven mutually exclusive and equally likely outcomes or equally likely events. And we have event A. As you can see, this is event A. It is associated with e2, e3, e5, e6 and e7. So event A is associated with these five, one, two, three, four, five events out of seven. So what we can say, the probability of event A is five upon seven, since five are in favor of event A and out of seven. So probability of event A is five upon seven. If we think of little bit about probability, then A may contain none of these event, if such is a situation, then probability of event must be zero. And what must be the maximum probability of any event? It may be full sample space set that is one. So probability of any event A lie between zero and one. Now we have failure of definition. So what is the failure of definition? What do you think? What is the failure in this definition? Let us think of the case when we have infinite number of trials. In that case, NS would contain infinite number of element. So you will think that the probability must go toward zero. No, in that case, we will still have some probability, not zero. So this is the failure of the definition. This definition doesn't work when number of element in sample space become infinity. So let's say we have different definition called as empirical or statistical definition that we can say experimental definition it is. What it says if m be the number of time in which the event a happens in series of n trial where is the event and m be the number of time the event a happen when we perform n trial then probability of happening event A is equal to 
P of A is equal to limit n tends to infinity m upon n. So this is the next definition that we can see. If m are favorable ways of event A and n is the total number of ways that is total n trial. If n tends to infinity then this become the definition of probability that we call empirical or statistical definition of probability. Let us think a little bit. First example we have, if we have infinite number of trial, then we will calculate the definition of probability become n tends to infinity m upon n. Now move on to next example that is example number two. The jumping of a child on a number line three unit at a time in ascending order. You can see we have a number line and uh, there is whole numbers or even we can have integers. If a child jump three unit at a time then their probability must be 1 by 3. Now again we have failure of definition. What kind of failure we can have? So question at the moment we have is can the probability be a irrational number? Probability of any event be an irrational number m and n are the integers so this probability p of a will always give the rational value and not irrational so you can say the probability of any event can't be irrational this will be rational always and that is the failure of this definition let us have the case in which we can obtain, we can attain irrational number as a probability. So let's say we have line segment AB. Its length is root 2 like here to here. We have length root 2 and from here onward we have length 1. So in total you can see we have length 1 plus root 2. So we have total length of line segment AVS 1 plus root. If I want to put my point over this line segment AB. So what is the probability that our point will lie on the line segment AC. If we put our pen on the line segment AB then obviously you will say probability is root 2 that is favorable ways upon 1 plus root 2 that is an irrational number. So we can see that the probability of any event can be a rational number as well and that is the failure of the definition. So let us move on the next definition that we have axiomatic definition. What this axiomatic definition is what scientists do is they define probability by piecewise. They have some basic uh, axioms related to probability and what it is you can see let us read it let s be the sample space of a random experiment the probability p is a real valued function whose domain is the power set of sample space s and range is the interval 0 to 1 satisfying the following axioms so before moving on to axioms let's understand it by Venn diagram. Let S be the sample space and uh, we have Venn diagram here. You can see the probability P is a real valued function. This is a real valued function in which domain is this is P of S not this is not a probability of sample space. So I have written here P of S is representing power set of sample space. The power set is the collection of all the subset of sample space and the range is 0 to 1. So this is becoming real valued function ps to 0 to 1. ps become the domain and 0 to 1 become the range of this real valued function. So let us read it again. Let s be the sample space of a random experiment. The probability p is a real valued function whose domain is the power set of s and range is the interval 
0 to 1. Probability of any event will always give value in this range 0 to 1 and uh, their domain is the subset of sample space. So axiomatic definition is axiomatic definition of probability says that P probability is a real valued function which satisfy the following axioms. Now what is axioms? First axioms we have for any event E probability of that event is always either equal to 0 or greater than 0. That is the first axiom. In second axiom we have probability of sample space is always equal to 1. That is P of S is 1. That is probability of sample space S is equal to 1. And in third axiom we have if E and F are mutually exclusive event. Very very important point we have is if E and F are mutually exclusive event then probability of E union F is probability of E plus P of F. These are the three main axiom that define the axiomatic definition. Now what is the note section? Let us think of probability of impossible event is zero. You can see P of E union phi is P of E plus P of phi. Null set. Since E and phi are mutually exclusive events, so we can have the third axiom as like this. And then P of phi become zero. That means, what does it mean? Probability of impossible event is zero. That represent probability of impossible event is zero. Now let us have an example. First example we have. Consider the sample space containing the outcome W1, W2, W3, W4 and Wn. We have an experiment whose outcomes are W1, W2 up to Wn. That is we can have sample space as we can write sample space as this. Then according to axiomatic definition what we can say about these outcomes. First we can say probability of each outcome is always lie between 0 and 1. For each wi belongs to sample space s. Then second point we can have if we add probability of each outcome then this become equal to 1. Probability of w1, probability w2, probability w3 up to wn then their uh, probability sum must be equal to 1. And third point we have for event A probability will be calculated as by this rule. What this rule is probability of W1 plus W2 plus W3 up to WK where W1, W2, W3, WK are the element in event A. So if we have event A that contain these, these outcomes then probability of event A become the sum of the probabilities of these individual outcomes that is written here. Now let's move on example number two. What it is? If we throw two dice then probability of getting sum less than four is. Now if we throw two dice then sample space contain n of s will contain 36 element and uh, what about event event part element the event will have throw two dice then probability of getting sum less than four so what must be inside the event one comma one one comma two one comma three can we have one comma three sum must be less than four so we can't have one comma three one comma two two comma one these are the only a element inside E. So n of E is equal to 3 hence desired probability is probability of event must be equal to 3 upon 36 that is 1 by 12. So what is the answer of this question? If we throw two dice then probability of getting some less than 4 is 1 by 12. This is our lecture. If you enjoy the like and subscribe our YouTube channel that is MathSark Education and visit our website www.mathsark.com. If you want to purchase our full video lectures then you, you can purchase at our website. Thanks.